Many threats that come before humanity in these scenarios are quite brazen or attempt to either take control of or wipe out as many human lives as possible from the time of their fruition. However, not every danger desires a full frontal assault and instead will lurk in the shadows, making itself seem like a series of morbid atrocities committed by the deeply depraved. Inspired by classics like The Thing and Invasion of the Body Snatchers, this anime manga adaptation brings a much more brutal and Blade Runner focused to body stealing alien life forms. Their reach can be erratic but discretionary, but one thing is for sure wherever they may roam, a trail of blood will follow in their wake. Today, we are discussing why you wouldn't survive a parasite invasion. You get to know, know it's <laughs> Stemming from origins unknown from the deepest reaches of space, green egg-like spores descend upon the Earth's surface by untold numbers being carried by the winds. Cracking open, do these spores give birth to larval, parasitic-like worms that will immediately seek out the nearest intelligent life form before it dies when exposed directly to the air. Once this larva detects an organism, will it immediately attack them, trying to enter through any orifice of the head in an attempt to invade the victim's brain? If that fails, it will simply use its drill-like head to burrow through a victim's flesh to invade the bloodstream to carry itself to the victim's brain. Once this is achieved, the parasite will eat through the gray matter of the person or animal till nothing is left inside of the head as it effectively fuses with the flesh and bone of the cranium. From there, it will take full control of the victim's body, with the original consciousness of the person completely erased, with the newly restructured head acting as the new body for the parasite as it feeds on the internal processes such as blood flow and digestion of the rest of the body to stay alive. Although if the parasite is unable to reach the brain via the bloodstream due to it being cut off from accessing it, it will simply hijack the closest body part as was the case for Miggy when taking over the right hand of his owner or jaw, well, taking over his host's jaw. Think of these parasites much like the Samothua exigua, aka the tongue-eating louse. The parasite that eats the tongue of a fish then transforms its own body to replace the tongue, effectively becoming a new tongue that benefits from anything the fish consumes, all while the fish itself remains alive and relatively unharmed. A mostly symbiotic relationship, as one-sided as it may be, and for the parasites unsuccessful in attaining the head, will they learn to work with the host body and to become non-hostile unless provoked by outside forces. But in the case of a majority of hosts that have their body invaded by the parasite, will the head be consumed and replaced for the parasite to become amorphous, freely able to change its shape at will and transform to meet its needs for any kind of scenario or predicament. Those needs either being to attack, consume, or blend in with surrounding human populations. Although, depending on what it takes over, will determine its next course of actions. So, depending on where these spore-like eggs land depends on how discreet or violent they will be in their beginning days masquerading as Earthborn life forms. Those with parasites that do not infect the head will not have the parasite try to consume meat, as it gains enough nutrition from the basic functions the body and will do everything in its power to keep the host body alive by protecting it because if the host body dies, it dies in turn. But for those with replaced heads and consciousness, the parasite will need to eat copious amounts of meat, but not just any meat, but the flesh of organisms of the same species it assumed control of in order to satiate their cannibalistic appetite and stay alive. 
they can transform their entire head in a multitude of different ways, even being able to create giant gaping maws to completely rip apart the flesh of a person or animal in seconds flat, even being able to eat the head of a person in one bite. The carnage they leave behind after feasting on flesh was referred to in the series as mincemeat murders, simply because barely anything is left of a corpse besides scattered limbs, bone shrapnel, and copious amounts of blood. Leaving behind a slaughterhouse of evidence can leave a lot of red flags for people and investigators to look at, which would leave these parasites and bodies and their pursuit of meat and intelligence to meet a quick end. Despite these extraterrestrial critters having no thought process beyond attacking prey the second they detect it when they are worms, as stated by Miji, the parasite consciousness is not formed until the moment they reach their host's biomass, and from there will, of course, consume what it can, but not just in flesh, they are also there to consume knowledge. The parasite quickly becomes an extremely discreet predator in the fact that it will try to learn everything it can in an extremely accelerated rate. The parasite, once in any part of the body, can learn language, mannerisms, etiquette, and more traits of being a person simply by observing or overhearing someone talk or watching a news broadcast for a very brief period of time. They can actively seek out books, research articles, and browse the internet to learn more about just about everything on Earth, from human culture to the sciences, just to become more acclimated and knowledgeable of their environment in order to blend in. Creepily enough, even just having eaten a father of a homestead, did a parasite overhear the young daughter speak as he learned the Japanese language in an instant. Traits like this allow monsters to be among us. <laughs> luring people in unsuspected of the demonic devouring presence that can eviscerate them in seconds. That or leave people paranoid as this parasite can retain the memories of the host it assumed control of, meaning much like the thing or invasion of the body snatchers, anyone could be a threat at any moment. Some parasites even being able to learn to become academic scholar levels of intelligence to meet their host's lifestyle to avoid detection, meaning any level of intellect can be achieved given even a short amount of time. If the identity of the person's face they are using is tied to a crime or suspected of anything, the parasite can observe other humans directly via pictures, television, or computers and change their facial structure and hair to match that of a person and even change their vocal patterns to sound like them, being easily able to change their persona on the fly to further avoid detection just by observing something is incredibly insane in the way that they can push forward in their espionage for consuming people or attacking them. The only way of detecting them once they have fully assimilated into society and the mass population is by having x-rays at checkpoints to scan the innards of every single human civilian, or even animals. Since the parasite completely replaces everything that it assimilates with, x-ray scans of body parts or heads will simply show up as void. Basically, if you look at an x-ray and there's a whole skeleton, but we don't see a skull on the scan, that means that is a parasite. And from there, the parasite can be gunned down in a flash. But will it be so easy that we can just exterminate them so quickly? Will these x-rays be a possibility if there are more spores released into the world, or if they coordinate their efforts more before x-rays and security checkpoints can even be established? Although easy enough security measures can also be implemented without high-tech equipment. Since the head is all alive for the parasite, simply removing hair from the scalp, ear, or nose will cause the removed follicles to writhe seemingly in pain from survival instinct to occur for the parasite. Because remember, every part of the head is a part of their flesh. If someone gets a haircut and they act like they're in pain, then you got yourself a parasite. That is a dead giveaway. The parasites themselves mostly act for themselves or independently, mainly wishing to just fit 
fulfill their gullet, they just want to eat. But some will work together for a more broader goal, considering only a few dozen were dispersed. It's easy to see a scenario where hundreds or even thousands were spread out further in condensed areas, and their reasoning for existence isn't by some random event or a chance of a spaceborne RNG like the thing when it crash landed on Earth. No, simply it is the cosmos giving an answer to humanity as it is basically a toxin on the Earth's surface. That is the purpose behind the parasites. They are acting as antibodies, neutralizers to the toxic presence of mankind. Now you might be thinking, oh, this is just wow such gaming trying to be philosophical. No, this is what some of the parasites actually believe. That's just a few of them. But what if each one born into our world met with this ideological way of thinking above just consumption? Well, let's just say it would be a way more grim fate of coordinated attacks that could easily happen. They would have a goal of wiping out mankind versus just eating a few people. This, however, wasn't the case as the space parasites sporadically infected whatever they could and attacked indiscriminately at first, infecting dogs where it could only eat other canines or infecting humans and being more interested in eating meat and spreading the heat around the growing sensation of the mincemeat murders. But whether they are acting as voracious individuals or as a coordinated group, one thing is for certain, their killing potential with you is going to be incredibly high with their transforming abilities. But when they are threatened, or simply unable to quell their hunger for flesh, they can mutate their head into weapons or means of mass consumption. The flesh of the head can be elastic like rubber while also hardening enough to be stronger than steel and bladed at edges, lending to its most deadly capability of creating multiple blade-like appendages that it can swing faster than the eye can see at long distances. Being able to cleanly cut through sturdy surfaces and human bodies in one clean slice with ease. As it's shown, it can even cut through multiple people in an instant without anyone realizing they were cut before every person present is cut apart and slaughtered. Its reflexes are superhuman, being able to deflect attacks at high speeds, even avoiding being shot by bullets with its iron defenses. Consider this though, only the part of the body that it has replaced and inhabits can be transformed. Any damage to the rest of the body will be like damaging a normal human being, so blows to the heart, heavy organ damage, or more that can be fatal to a human will be quickly fatal to the parasite shortly after as it requires the body to stay alive. If the parasite itself is harmed in any way, say like if you shoot the head, it can simply regenerate its flesh and heal itself instantaneously by using energy and blood from the host body. Meaning even deadly attacks that the parasite uses its own form for to protect the host body will mean it can quickly shrug off any damage it takes. As the parasite evolves its intelligence, it can learn different fighting methods and can use multiple attack patterns all in unison with its appendages, making them even more lethal. Even weaker forms of the parasite that take over smaller creatures like corgis can be deadly to go up against, transforming much of the body to enable it to fly and slash at victims at high speeds, easily eviscerating any foe. It can produce muscular strength to run extremely fast and leap high lengths with ease, and it can also throw objects at cannons like velocities to kill targets from a long distance and give Hulk-like strength to easily crush the skulls and bodies of opposing humans. It can separate parts of its parasitic form to either multiply its task making in peace or send a sharp worm-like projectile into other living beings to cause them to expand and eventually explode in a bloody mess. Doing so, however, will hinder the power and shape-shifting capabilities of the parasite until it is whole again. The sentient muscles elastic transformations are also malleable in that they can suppress targets in an instant or create ironclad-like shields to defend against all attacks, basically transforming into anything the parasite can imagine. And as the intelligence grows, the more its morphine capabilities will magnify. If a parasite knows a mental weakness of a foe, it can provide visual cues to either deter, detract, or slow a foe long enough to attack them for a decisive kill. 
parasites also show a great weakness towards fire, with high amounts of heat apparently causing the parasite cells to go sporadic and uncontrollable, leaving the parasite itself to be erratic and more easily attacked and quelled. Hosts that are exposed to diseases, toxins, or even alcohol can have adverse effects for the parasites since they both share the same benefits and detriments of the host body. It will show extreme difficulty in not only controlling its extremities, but be unable to shape its form back into that of a human's, leaving it open to being found out if attempting to blend in with the body and mind of the parasite being unable to heal its own dead cells fast enough because of the extreme heat. The parasite can go berserk, attempting to slaughter anything that poses a threat to it, leaving any inhibition of discretion out of the window and purely acting on pure rage. However, even if a parasite is defeated in a body that it inhabits, if another viable host is nearby, it can quickly see to hijacking it in the same way it did its original host. It can take over another body so long as the prey that it targets is both of the same species and sex as its original host that it took over. If not, the new host body will reject the parasite outright, forcing it out. Parasites do have the capability of switching bodies if threatened enough, and multiple parasites have also been shown to be able to inhabit the same body at the same time, with the smartest parasite being in control of all of their abilities, although at a great mental and physical cost to the main host. If a parasite with much mental and physical fortitude were to bide its time, a veritable super soldier of the parasitic army could easily wield five or more parasites to make each appendage of the body indestructible, destructive weapons, although there is little left of the human host. So the multiple parasites of this body would need to eat human flesh pretty frequently to stay alive. If a parasite finds itself as a dominant form, it can coerce or force other weaker-willed parasites to inhabit the same body, but in doing so, they mostly relinquish their consciousness to allow the dominant parasite to control the parts of the body they take over, effectively making a super parasite body that can wield multiple weapons formed from its multiple parasitic limbs. Whereas before the superhuman part of its form was restricted to just one body part, now any and all limbs can be part of its arsenal, making it much more deadlier and stronger. While it does take more energy and nourishment to keep multiple parasites alive, having that many to counter all weaknesses besides the small portions of the body that are still human will make it a near invincible foe. For those strong enough where multiple parasites reside in one body, even gunfire will prove to be ineffective as the fluid-like flesh can capture each projectile and then fire it back with equal or even greater force to obliterate its gun-wielding adversaries without even lifting a finger. If a parasite imitating the head or another part is severed, the other parasites can simply switch places to keep the wound closed so each parasite can remain alive within the body and quickly get back to their positions, effectively making means like even decapitation almost impossible to deal with them as they seek out people to kill and or devour. Consuming flesh, however, is not strictly mandatory for the parasites that took over the head like I may have alluded to before. The more intelligent of the parasites out there will want to keep their identity secret and instead will regulate to a normal human diet and sometimes discreetly drink blood to keep themselves functioning and satiated. So upon the parasite invasion, one of three avenues can be advertently created from these parasites once they have spread across the world, becoming ravenous and detected early on to be a extinguished just as fast by authorities or biding their time to gain intelligence and make super soldiers and multi-parasite hosts, but still require the consumption of people to survive or creating an army of super intelligent parasite hosts lurking in the shadows, taking over important positions in society and attempting to wipe out the scourge of the world known as mankind. That or we could see all three avenues successfully domino affecting without human interference coming into full play before it's too late, which is definitely possible. 
Think of Resident Evil 4's Las Plagas, but a lot more secretive in its way of spreading and potentially more deadly and more widespread before we even know what is going on. With every person on Earth possibly being drilled into by this invasive worm overnight, with no buildup to them coming to Earth, there's no rhyme or reason to why some people will suddenly become parasite hosts. Suddenly, these infected people will be consuming the flesh and heads of their loved ones to feed and transforming into the personas of others and learning how to be human and feigning emotions to walk out of any situation without being suspected. It's possible that you won't even survive the initial invasion. You could be among those that were asleep that were completely consumed in an instant. Or you could be one of those living with a parasite host that is completely obliterated by them and either sliced into ribbons or your entire body eaten like a bloody buffet. You you could provoke a parasitic host and be killed in an instant with any witness nearby being included in the same body count as you. Super soldiers could be established and rip through entire populations. Or if discreet, these parasites that view humanity as a disease could do any number of things to society's detriment. They have the intelligence to know how to really bring down mankind. Even possibly taking the identity of high profile figures like politicians, celebrities, or dare I say, internet influencers so they can sway the opinions of the public to work in their favor or neutralize any programs or widespread efforts to oust them or kill them and turn things against humans at the smaller and then eventually wider scale. You could be one of the lucky few that has a parasite unsuccessfully not take over the human brain and instead a part of your body. But even then, a range of events could happen to you that could lead to your swift demise. Sure, it could be friggin' sweet to have an appendage of yours have superpowers and establishing a symbiotic relationship with an alien inside your body. It might seem cool, but each parasite can be built differently and think differently. Parasites will do everything in their power from the get-go to protect their host body, even if they don't directly control all of it. For those who work in a symbiotic relationship with their host, they can quickly look to healing any injury the host may suffer to their body, even fashioning functioning hearts and replacing the literal destroyed heart to keep blood pumping before the brain dies in a matter of seconds by fusing the parasite flesh with the body to reproduce vessels, arteries, and blood cells, and then eventually once enough blood cells have been produced, it can reproduce itself to be at the arm again. This can effectively make a host more durable if given the chance and also provides the implication that the same can be done by a parasite that has hijacked a full human body since only the head is usually replaced. Those with further replaced body parts by their symbiotic partner will inherit their superhuman feats of reflexes, strength, and combat skills. Being able to stop high-speed cars, jump buildings in a flash, being able to land without taking any fall damage, basically just being a superhuman just because your hand is infected. If given an opportunity to do more with itself, it can jump ship. Parasites are known to switch host bodies and sometimes work under other, more intelligent parasites within the same frame. If your parasite deems your body not worth it or is less dominant than other parasites it meets, you could easily be executed immediately as they commence a trade deal. Think of it like the NFL, but instead of trading meatheads between teams, Teams, they are trading potential heads of meat between bodies. Parasites can also detect the brain waves of one another, and if they detect you with a parasite that was a failure at taking over a body, it can easily seek to either kill you or recruit your symbiote parasite. You can also risk the possible eventuality that the parasite invasion is broadcasted and well known to humanity in a short amount of time, with the previously mentioned x-rays coming to full fruition. And if detected by scared guards or military personnel, could easily gun you down or burn you alive to extinguish any trace of the foreign parasite. You will be marked a menace that needs to be exterminated, flesh that fused with a threat to humanity. But ultimately, it's highly doubtful you'll even have a symbiotic relationship with the parasite as a majority of the time they are successful in hijacking the brain and wiping out everything that made you you, including your head. And while this parasite isn't shown to reproduce in any way, it's possible it can learn to send out signals someday to send more of these spores 
to descend upon Earth. It can easily take over the personas of people more so than any other body snatching threat in fiction before it, as others could barely hold their own, but having a biomass that can create faster than lightning bladed weapons to slice through hordes of people and hard objects in an instant while compounding itself to become either stronger in one body or smarter in many bodies undetected, or can use many parasites in a body to make a basically what is a form of a tank. Let's just say the parasite has a lot of different avenues where it can discreetly take out mankind or come in full force. Let's just say the parasite will win before we even know the full scope of its threat and while the last remaining few people even know what's going on, it's going to be too late. The parasites will have already done what they can to wipe us all out. That about wraps up this parasitic look into the anime manga series Parasite or Parasite Maxim. This honestly was one of my favorite animes back in the day and reading through the colored manga release rejuvenated my love for it. I kind of wish we got more of it but it definitely was a good series that ended on a decent note. Is there something about the parasites that I did not elaborate enough on or do you think you're just built different and think you could survive with a new symbiote friend? Let me know in the comments. It'll probably be a while before I do another anime series as the last one was Jojo's Bizarre Adventure part three almost three years ago so throw some ideas my way of some anime you want me to do i eventually want to do one on the entire world of one piece but that'll have to wait another four to five years before the series actually ends plus that video will be excruciatingly long shout out to you for watching my dumb ramblings on this website of nerds and big shout out to my patreon patrons and youtube channel members who support the channel and have their beautiful names featured right here on screen until next time i'm zach ass aka wow such gaming never forget to stay happy stay healthy stay parasite free and stay wow well.